Hello and welcome or welcome back to ISC's RFP Toolkit Part 3 RFP Creation. A key ingredient of every RFP document, of course, are requirements. Unfortunately, requirements management is not a very precise science. There are many different categories of requirements and it's typically not black and white. And also requirements have a tendency to mature and change over time. So getting a grip on your requirements management process and having a realistic snapshot of stable requirements as input for your RFP is probably going to be one of the hardest challenge that you'll be facing as part of the RFP document creation and the entire procurement process. Let's have a quick look at different categories for requirements. So naturally, we have business requirements or functional requirements that basically deal with what the solution needs to do. Then we have non-functional requirements that deal with certain aspects of how the solution has to do this in terms of scalability, um, robustness, uh, average response times, and so on. That's obviously very close also to quality requirements. And then you have production requirements, which in an IoT project, obviously, are very important when you look, for example, at country-specific expected behavior in your production system and so on. Stakeholder requirements are typically a softer set of requirements that might not directly find their way into the RFP document, but where it's up to the project manager to take care of this and translate it, for example, to functional or non-functional requirements and so on. And then last but not least, you have project requirements that deal, for example, with budget, with timelines, with key milestones and so on. So naturally, all of this needs to be part of your RFP. But before you start creating your RFP, I think it's important to really understand how you are going to evaluate the different offers that you are expecting from the vendors. So a good step before actually going down into the details of the RFP document is really to look at this from a higher level perspective and look at what are the top evaluation criteria. So here we're using um, a handy template as part of the Ignite methodology, which basically looks at a set of different criteria, for example, IoT general criteria or non-functional, functional requirements or requirements which are related to the operations and maintenance of your IT solutions. Typically, each of these criteria is assigned a weighting. And so we see here, for example, 35% uh, for general, 25 for non-functional and so on. And then each detailed criteria like price or completeness of offering and so on gets its um, detailed weighting. Typically, what you also want is to assign a minimum value that has to be um, achieved for each of these different uh, criteria, so that you can then, when you look at a concrete example, as we can see here, we have the famous Acme IIT Solutions vendor here who's been evaluated. So the evaluation basically is on a scale from 1 to 10, yeah, where 1 basically means uh, the vendor fails the evaluation and 10 is uh, the highest possible value, you can map the individual evaluation score against the minimum score to arrive at a um, traffic light type of visualization where you have green, yellow and red. Red highlighting these things where you might have um, a show stopper that basically um, would make an offer from that particular vendor not acceptable. And then for those vendors who basically are in the acceptable range, you get the weighted evaluation, which basically combines the evaluation score with the weighting and gives you 
um, an average score on a scale from one to 10. So for this particular vendor, for example, here, you get a score of six. So when defining such an evaluation uh, criteria and evaluation sheet, it's really important that you, uh, that you ask yourselves questions like, how important is cost really for me? What's the ratio between cost and my functional and non-functional requirements? What's the ratio between the functional and non-functional requirements? So it's really important to address all of these things probably before you go into the detailed work of really identifying and describing each of these functional and non-functional requirements in greater detail. It really helps starting with this big picture yeah, where you also look at, for example, the vendor evaluation. So what's important for you from an vendor's point of view in terms of size, financial stability, what kind of long-term maintenance support capabilities can he offer to you, are they affordable, and so on. Once you have this, then the next step really is to um, go into the uh, creation of the RFP document. And here we have a typical template where, of course, you need company, project name, proposal due date. You typically have a high-level project overview. You describe your high-level project goals. And then, actually, you take these requirements that ideally already have been used for your evaluation criteria to describe in more detail the scope of work. So your functional and non-functional and quality criteria. Obviously, each good RFP document also needs to include submission requirements. Depending on your own policies, you might actually want to make it transparent how you are going to evaluate. Um, it can be actually quite helpful both for the suppliers and for the buyer to be as transparent about this as possible. Then, of course, you have the um, submission process, timeline and budget description, and don't forget your contact details. So with this, um, you typically would be off to a good start for creating your RFP document. And in the next part of this, we will look at IC's online RFP wizard to help you creating the initial version of this document. See you there.